world according to Jesse. Jesse, Jesse. Today, I welcome back a Jammu Baraka, international human rights activist and organizer for the Black Alliance for Peace. He joins me now to talk about U.S. foreign policy in Venezuela, Iran, and North Korea. You recently visited Venezuela as part of a peace delegation. You went before the failed military coup led by opposition leader Juan Guaido. Tell me about your work there and what you saw on the ground. Well, you know, Jesse, we landed in Venezuela right in the middle of the first uh, cyber attack on that country. So there was no electric, uh, no uh, lights in the airport, uh, none across the country. And what we saw was uh, the consequence of an illegal act uh, that was really having a negative impact on, on the people of that country. Uh, we saw uh, places where um, young men had to carry elders up to the top floors because the elevators didn't work. Uh, people had to get in lines to get water because, of course, without electric, you can't pump water to the upper floors of buildings. So we saw a lot of people who were suffering as a consequence of this attack. But you know what we also saw? We saw a population that was prepared to endure in order to protect the integrity of their process. Uh, the people that we had a chance to meet and talk with uh, had one uh, message. That message was, we have a democracy here that we believe is important uh, and that we are prepared to, uh, to defend. They said that uh, while they don't want war, they are prepared to, uh, to resist. Uh, and they said, take that message back uh, to the American people. So we had a chance to move around the country, to meet people, to see uh, the resistance, to see the response. Uh, and it became quite clear to us that uh, Juan Guaido had very little real support in that country. Is the media fairly covering how Venezuela's view sitting President Nicolas Maduro and Juan Guaido? It's a complete uh, and utter um, distortion. 80% um, of the population in Venezuela had never heard of Juan Guaido uh, four months ago. Uh, his, um, his emergence has been externally created uh, and imposed on the people of that country. The notion that the divided uh, uh, opposition in Venezuela could uh, galvanize around this unknown character is a complete fabrication. Uh, the people in, Venez in Venezuela support the government. That's clear in the massive uh, uh, demonstrations. They get very little support, very little coverage in the U.S., uh, but quite clear to folks outside of the U.S. who get uncensored uh, information on what's happening inside the country. So it's a complete and utter distortion. The coup didn't work. What do you suppose will happen now? Well, the, the, the coup continues. There's still the attempt by the, par, by the U.S. to try to undermine uh, the process in that country. Uh, people are still suffering as a consequence of the, of the sanctions. Uh, Juan Guaido is still attempting to try to persuade elements of the uh, military to come to the side of the coup makers against the people. You know, it's being framed, Jesse, as, a, as, as the pivotal element being the military. But the real element that sustains the process in Venezuela are the people. So they want to try to persuade elements of the military to turn against uh, the Venezuelan people. And that's not going to happen. Spain's acting foreign minister says Venezuela needs a peaceful, negotiated, and democratic solution. With the U.S. acting like a cowboy threatening to draw his gun, is that likely to happen? You know, just the people have to have to understand, and they may not know, that there was a, a long conversation, a long process of dialogue with the opposition um, through the latter part of, t of 2017 into the beginning part of 2018. And there was a, a, an agreement uh, to have uh, elections, uh, and the opposition was supposed to participate in those elections. The only issue was the date of the elections. That dialogue stopped 
when uh, the U.S. administration instructed the opposition not to participate in the election because they had a plan to basically undermine the process. So this call for more uh, conversation, more dialogue, I'm sure that the uh, government would, uh, would attempt to do that. But the issue is not dialogue. The issue is the destabilization on the part of the U.S. government and the illegal activities that they are involved in to undermine the integrity of, a, of that process and the uh, national security and national sovereignty of the Venezuelan government. Russia and China are also involved in Venezuela. Talk about their roles in the region. Well, the, the uh, Venezuelan government, they have uh, relations with uh, China, with Russia. Uh, the Russians have provided um, loans to the government. The Chinese are involved in trade relations with the uh, Venezuelan government. Uh, but the enhancement of the presence of those two countries is as a consequence of the, of the uh, mistakes made by the U.S. government uh, to undermine the ability of the Venezuelan government to be independent, uh, to be able to feed its own people, to not, not be dependent on so-called humanitarian assistance. So the enhanced presence of both China and Russia is as a consequence, uh, the result of the undermining of the independence of the Venezuelan government by U.S. policies. Let's move on to Iran. It's been a year since the U.S. abandoned the nuclear deal, and now Iran says it's going to stop complying. Is the U.S. laying the groundwork for a war with Iran? It's very unfortunate and very dangerous what's unfolding in, in the Mediterranean uh, and the relationship uh, between the U.S. Uh, and Iran. Um, it's been one year, as you said in your question, uh, since uh, the Trump administration abandoned the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, negotiated uh, by a number of states, um, and something that many people around the world saw as a very significant and very important uh, breakthrough. The Trump administration uh, tore up the plan. Uh, they put pressure on their allies to uh, disengage from Iran. Uh, and now we see uh, this very dangerous escalation of military equipment being shipped into the Mediterranean with the real possibility of even a mistake occurring that could result in a, a hot war between uh, the U.S. Uh, and Iran. The American people are tired of war. Uh, and it's unfortunate that uh, there's no opposition in the Congress uh, to the, this war migraine coming from the Democratic Party. But it's very, very dangerous and very unfortunate uh, that we see that unfolding in that part of the world. 